Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mass Live reporter Aviva Latrell. I am in Worcester this afternoon at Sail to Trail Wine Works, which just opened up a tasting room in the former Higgins Armory building in North Worcester. So I am here with owner Chris Simpson. He's going to be giving us a look around the new space and telling um, us a little bit about what is going to be happening here. So I'm going to turn the camera around. How's it Hello. going? Good, how are you? Good, thank Thanks you so much. Today. Yeah, thank you for having us. So I'm just going to do a quick pan around the room so everyone can kind of get a look about, look at um, what we're going to be talking about here. And of course, we'll go through the space as well. But um, if you're just tuning in, we're at Sail to Trail Wineworks in Worcester in the former Higgins Armory building. They just opened up a tasting room yesterday. Last night was our first night. And we're here with owner and founder, Chris Simpson. So Chris, tell us about what customers can expect when they come in here. So, uh, what they can expect is they can expect a casual atmosphere. Uh, you know, last night when we opened, I had a lot of people that were in here just hanging out uh, for several hours, uh, just relaxing, talking with friends, which is exactly what I want it to be. Uh, great wines. I'd like to walk people through the entire portfolio from Sauvignon Blanc to my reserve cab, and just hang out and get to know people. Get to know people's name. You know, ask people their names talk to them about their experience with, with wine, and really just create a welcoming atmosphere where people can come in and they can enjoy in an evening, enjoy 15, 20 minutes, they can get a great bottle of wine, and really with no pretense. This is a, you know, it's a casual environment. You can see this is kind of my standard, my standard uniform here. Um, you know, it's not, it's not a, uh, a, a pinkies out experience. I don't want it to be. And I really just want it to be a casual place where people can relax and enjoy great wine and then bring some home to their family and friends and, and just enjoy it. Excellent. So for anyone who isn't familiar with the story about how you founded Sail to Trail, can you kind of walk us through what that was like? Sure. So um, I was working in the corporate space and was interviewing with another company down on the South Shore that made um, submarine components. And I was doing, I was going to be interviewing with the CEO and I was doing my research on in, in advance of the interview just to be able to speak intelligently about what the company does, a little bit about his background. And I saw that he was on the board of directors of a, um, or board of advisors of a winery. And I thought that was really interesting cross-pollination. So uh, it turns out it was his son's winery. And uh, I went to the website. They had great marketing. They had great branding. And I just started to kind of peel back layers of the onion on, on, on the industry. And he had quite a bit of information about his, about the business plan on there, probably more than he should have, but gave me some good insight to get started. And so, uh, when I was done, I said, wow, this would be great. This is, you know, we have brew pubs popping up all over the place. Um, you know, but there's really nothing winery related. There's nothing, there's, there's for, for the wine aficionado, there's just nothing that is a complement to the brewery experience, not only here in Worcester, but for as far as I can tell. So I said, wow, this is, you know, with the, with the transformation that Worcester is going through right now, I said, this is, not only is this the perfect time for it with Worcester's Renaissance, which is finally here, but it's also, I think, it was the opportunity to bring something really special to Worcester, you know, rather than Boston. Boston Boston already has all the nice things. I've, I'm a Worcester resident. I was born here. I was raised here. I've lived here my entire life, for the most part. Um, and I really wanted to bring this to Worcester. I thought that Worcester was, it was the right time. Worcester's brand is an up-and-coming brand. I thought it was the right time, the right concept, the right opportunity. I thought it was interesting. And um, I've loved every minute of it. Awesome. So maybe you could take us through the space. Um, we could take a look at some of the wines that you're offering here, as sure. well as the layout of the tasting room itself. So maybe we could start back here with... Sure. So this is my entire portfolio right here. This uh, up top here represents a little bit in the way of some learning experiences along the way. Um, but all of my wines, I source them from vineyards in uh, California and Washington. And this is my portfolio right here. Basically, it's going in this direction kind of the same way this way. So this is my reserve cab. This is uh, as good of a domestic cab as you're likely to find. I've gone to a number of festivals 
And I, I've said that to some of my clients when they first meet me. And they say, well, that's a pretty big statement. And I say, yeah. And I said it pretty confidently. And they try it and they end up buying a case. It's my best seller right now. So um, this is an absolutely spectacular Cabernet. It's got a really, really nice copper hue in the color. It's, um, everything about it is perfectly balanced. There's some tannin, um, there's some acidity, but nothing is overpowering. It's just the balance on that wine is really phenomenal. And the cabs kind of, what I say is they bookend my, my, my price range. This is, so this is a $40 cab and this is uh, an $18 cab. Some people, a lot of people actually prefer this. This is a really, really big cab. This is a peppery cab. This is an in-your-face cab. Um, it's, it's approachable as an everyday wine for people. Uh, this, you know, if this is an everyday wine for someone, then good for them. But, you know, a $40 <laughs> wine is not an everyday wine for me. Um, but this is a really big wine. People that like big, big cabs, this is a great wine with a steak, with gorgonzola. Uh, this is a big cab. This is my favorite wine in the portfolio, my Zinfandel. So this is from a part of the country and a vintage where it's gonna be almost impossible for you to find a better Zinfandel. That Zinfandel is really, really fruit forward with a really spectacular raspberry aroma to it. It is a just a wonderful, wonderful Zinfandel. This is far and away my favorite wine in the portfolio. So here we have my Chardonnay. It's an unoaked shard, so it was fermented all on stainless steel. So it's not rich, it's not buttery. And I have a lot of clients that will come to me and say, well, I don't really like shards that much because you know they're oaky and they're buttery. And I say, well, that's great because you're probably gonna like my shard. So the shard is very light, it's really crisp. Uh, there are really nice notes of pineapple in there if you know where to look for it. Uh, it took me a little while. The first time my son tried it, she said, oh, pineapple. And I said, I, I wish I tasted pineapple. And one day I was, I had a meeting here <clears throat> and I took a sip because, you know, when we have meetings here, wine tends to be a part of the meeting. Of course. People like being here. Um, and I tasted it. And ever since then, now that I know how to look for it, all I can taste when I drink my Chardonnay is pineapple. So typically I wouldn't be a Chardonnay guy, but because of that pineapple, um, because of the, the, you know, that strong pineapple flavor, I love this Chardonnay. And my Sauvignon Blanc, this is my most popular white actually. It's like silver in a glass. You can see it's, good. it's in a clear bottle because I really wanted to show off the color. It is, um, there's good citrus in there. Um, some people pick up on some melon, I don't. Uh, I can definitely get the, the citrus notes in there. But this is a, my son called this the perfect porch pounder. So this is a really great Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and I've been, blowing this out a lot of people have really liked how crisp that is that's a really really nice wine excellent so. great let's take a walk through the rest of the space and sure. as you can see there's this really cool mural in the back that we can talk about in a second but if you're coming in you can see over there is the entrance and this is sort of an overview yeah so let's talk about this mural sure so this is my man Eamon my uh Eamon Gillen who is a uh, an artist with Pow Wow, he, I, I got in touch with him through Worcester Wares. Uh, Jess Walsh put me in touch with him. Excuse me. Um, he had, he made some great stickers. He's a tattoo artist uh, over on Grafton Street. Sorry, I can't remember the name of the tattoo parlor right now, but he's um, he's amazing. And he had some stickers that he was selling at Worcester Wares, and I just thought they were awesome. One of them is on my laptop. Um, it's the second laptop I've had with one of the stickers on there. And what I found out from Jessica Walsh, I said, you know, who is this guy? And she said, oh, that's Eamon. And he's great. And he came in here, he and I met. He looked at the wall. He asked me, you know, what are you looking for? And I said, Eamon, you know, I'm coming to you because I like what you do. So you, you know, go bananas. I said, really, the only thing I'd like to sit and have on there is my name in there someplace. And so he... Did this mural, it couldn't be more Worcester. You have three deckers over on, you know, in Seven Hills. You got Coney Island over in the corner. Smiley, uh, he even managed to get my, my logo on Lake Quinn Sig there just a little bit. And every time I look at this, I find different things in here that I noticed that I didn't notice before. Yeah. And uh, 
he was a beast in putting this together. He's a dad right over on Indian, um, Indian Hill. And he would come in here, I'd open up the space for him at night, at night, eight at night, you know, eight in the evening after he put his kids to bed. He's a dad and he wanted to do that and he would do it late at night. And he'd be here at like three o'clock in the morning. Wow. Um, painting, you know, my motion detectors were still going off. I'd be like, dude, you're a beast, and, you know, so, but he did a phenomenal job. Um, it's mixed media. Uh, he definitely some spray paint in there, some brush work. I think he even did some with magic marker. And then because he's just such a perfectionist, he went over it uh, with a, um, like a, like a semi-gloss, um, like a lacquer. So, cause he said, you know, the different media is going to have different finishes and he didn't want, you know, Worcester to be shiny while, you know, the, the train whistle was, you know, a different sheen. And, uh, that's just what a perfectionist he is. And it just, I couldn't, I just couldn't, every day was a treat coming in here and seeing that progress. Yeah, I bet. That must have been a pretty amazing process it to was, watch him. It was wonderful. Wonderful. Excellent. Great. So people can obviously come into the tasting room here, try wine, buy it. Let's talk about the mail subscription service sure. that you launched beforehand. Sure. So, yeah, that was the first. It was the first service I offered. Um, the first, I was able to ship to forty-three states initially. Massachusetts wasn't one, um, but in the last three weeks, I think I've been able to ship to Massachusetts. Everyone still assumes that Massachusetts is a no-ship state for wine. That's not the case. Actually, Massachusetts makes it fairly easy now to be able to ship into Massachusetts. So I can ship to residents in Massachusetts. Uh, I have fulfillment that's provided um, out in the Midwest um, because I, I just thought that, uh, you know, as, as, as shipments and club gathered steam, that would become a really time-consuming operation and um, that's centrally located so that I can ship my wine to consumers, anybody that's interested in whether it's California or Idaho or, or Massachusetts, and they take care of that for me. So um, you can also join club. Uh, I have the Ladder 7 Club, which is uh, my way of paying tribute to my grandfather, who was uh, on the Ladder 7 um, team uh, out of the old Winslow Street Station wow. for 35 years. Mm -hmm. um, I actually gave, I went to, uh, which is now at Hyder's Market, I actually went down to Ed Hyder's yesterday and gave the owner a bottle of my reserve because I said, you know, it was my opening day. And uh, I wanted to, you know, you know, I wanted to go in there. I just kind of wanted to see the the brass pole that I used to slide down on my grandfather's yeah. back when I was a kid. Wow! And uh, sort of told him the story, and we're gonna touch base, you know, and, and maybe partner up. But uh, yeah, that was that was pretty neat yesterday. Wow! Yeah, definitely. Your story is very Worcester centric. Very Worcester. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, excellent. Great. Um, how about the hours that you're open here for anyone who wants to stop by? So for starters, I was open 12 to 8 yesterday. Um, tonight I'm open, I opened at noon. Uh, had to make a delivery, as you know. Yep. Uh, um, but I am open until 9 tonight. Tomorrow I'm open until 6 o'clock. And then I'm going to the uh, Railroad game with my family, uh, supporting um, St. Peter's Central Catholic where my kids go to school. Mm -hmm. And then I'm open on 12 to 4 on Sunday. I am not right now open on Monday. Um, I may reconsider that, kind of see how things go over the course of the weekend. Uh, but right now I'm not open on Monday. And those hours that I just listed are, for right now, I intend those to be my, to be kind of my standard hours. So they're on the website, they're on Google, they're on Facebook. And, Great. And they're on my door. Awesome. And people can find Sail to Trail Wine at a couple of places in the area yeah. as well. Yeah. So, um, Sang and Camille, uh, over at the wine run, they're carrying my entire portfolio right now. I just made a delivery to Brendan O'Connor at O'Connor's. So O'Connor's is going to be carrying my wine this weekend. Uh, I have a lot of interest from other restaurants and, and retailers in the area. Uh, just, you know, it's right now it's a matter of going in, letting them taste the wine and kind of mull over how it would fit into their portfolio and making a decision. But yeah, right now you can get it at, you can get it here. Uh, you can get it at O'Connor's Restaurant, and yeah, you can get it over at the wine line. Go say hi to San and Camille for me. Excellent. Great, Chris. Thank you so much for showing us around. Thank I'll you. give one more quick overview of the space for anyone who might have tuned in a little after we started. Again, we're at Sail to Trail Wine Works, which just opened up their tasting room in the former Higgins Armory building in Worcester.
As you can see, this is what it looks like. And I'll just give a quick view out the door as well, which we didn't do before. So they're on the second floor when you come in the building. Oh, I can take that one. I can take that down. <laughs> oh yeah, that's already back, back now. <laughs> And again, their tasting room just opened last night. They also offer a wine subscription service online as well. All right, again, this is Aviva La Trail with Mass Live. Thank you so much for watching. We are at Sale to Trail Wine Works in Worcester, which just opened up their tasting room in the Higgins Armory building last night. Uh, we are chatting with Chris Simpson about the story behind the winery as well as what people can expect when they come in here. So if you are interested in seeing some more photos of the space, you can head on over to MassLive.com a little later. I will have a gallery posted. And again, thanks so much for watching.